Welcome to day 7 of the 2024 Advent of Code. For today's problem, we're getting some calibration equations, which are in the form of a number followed by a list of space-separated integers. We are essentially trying to determine if the test value on the left can be produced by combining the remaining numbers on the right using operators. The operators are evaluated left to right, so we don't have to deal with precedence, and the numbers cannot be rearranged. We can only use two operators here, addition and multiplication. So let's run through an example on our blackboard first. Let's take the example of trying to obtain 3, 2, 6, 7, given the numbers 81, 40, and 27. We can work through this backwards because our operators go left to right, and so essentially everything before here we can treat as some black box value first, and then we can look at the last value first. We have two options. We can either have a multiplication sign here or an addition sign. In the first case, this only makes sense if 3, 2, 6, 7 is a multiple of 27, which it is. It's 121 times 27. Essentially, that means if we can get 1 to 1 out of the remaining elements and then multiply 27, we can get 3, 2, 6, 7. And so we can recursively analyze this by seeing if we can obtain 81, sum operator 40, and get 1, 2, 1. Alternatively, we can add 27, in which case we're trying to get 3, 2, 4, 0 on the left. And so in this case, it only makes sense if our value is greater than this value, because we cannot obtain negative numbers using this. And so that gives us 3, 2, 4, 0, obtained from 81 and 40. In the first case, we can try multiplication, but 40 is not a factor of 1 to 1, so this would not make sense. Therefore, we can skip that and try addition, in which case we would need to be able to obtain 81 from 81. Once the right-hand side is down to just one value, this is true if and only if these two values are equal, and so we have a match. If this weren't to match, we could continue on to this side, where multiplication would work, as it would also give us 81 from 81, and trying to add 40 would not work as we would get 3200 from 81. And this is a mismatch because we only have one value left and these two are not equal. Therefore, let us go to solving. Our answer is going to be the total of all the test values that are valid. And so we'll maintain and output some total value. In order to determine whether or not we can obtain a value, we can create a recursive function that has a target number and an array of numbers, and we'll return from this later. We can go through each line of input and separate out the left and right sides, which will be joined on a colon followed by a space. The left side represents our target as an integer, and the right side represents our array as a list of space separated integers. Now what we can do is if we can obtain this target from the array of values on the right, we add the target to our total. Going back to implement can obtain, we can follow basically the steps that I described on the visual. And so if the array has only one value left, then our answer to whether we can obtain it is just whether the target is equal to that sole element. Otherwise, if the target can be evenly divided by the last value in the array, and we can obtain the target divided by that value from the rest of the array, we return true. And otherwise, if the target is greater than the array, and we can obtain the target minus the last value from the rest of the array, then addition would be a valid operation, so we can also return true. If neither of these cases are true, then we can return false. And so that gives us our answer to part one, with the exception that I forgot how to check for divisibility. Uh, if I add in the equal zero check, that gives us our answer for part one. 
I'd like to take a moment to introduce my sponsor, CodeCrafters. Many people ask me how I learned to code, and I've always learned best by actually going in hands-on with a project or problem rather than reading documentation or tutorials. That's why I love CodeCrafters, a platform that lets you build real-world software to both develop your problem-solving skills and train you in a specific language of your choosing. CodeCrafters lets you choose something to build such as a BitTorrent or Git clone, and a language from a growing selection of over 20 languages and counting. You simply clone a repository from them, write your code to build your project with their intuitive step-by-step -step process, and push to get immediate feedback. I've been meaning to learn Rust for a long time, and when I get the time, CodeCrafters will be my choice for how I go from no experience to someone ready to start building my own things in Rust. Whether you're a beginner or already experienced in a language, CodeCrafters is a great way to start coding, pick up a new language, or master your language with its selection of projects. Doing a project teaches you more than just coding, as you can learn about protocols and existing software such as TCP, Kafka protocols, the inner workings of SQL databases, and more. If you sign up for free via my link in the description, you'll get 40% off if you choose to upgrade, which unlocks more content, gives you priority on test runs, grants access to perks which can save you money on all sorts of other platforms, and more. Plus, if you sign up within this December, you'll get access to all of the problems for free for one week. If you work at a company with learning and development benefits, be sure to check if CodeCrafters would qualify, so you don't even need to pay for it yourself. Thank you for your support, and let's get on with the rest of the video. Moving on to part 2, we are just adding an extra operator and doing the exact same thing. This operator is concatenation, which takes the left and right numbers digits and fuses them into one number by simply placing the digits next to each other. Let's take a look at an example here, 192 for example. So 192 can be produced from 17, 8, and 14 by first concatenating and then adding. So the multiplication check here, 192 divided by 14 is not an integer, so this would be excluded. When we try to do the addition check, we can see that we would need to get 178 from 17 and 8. If we were to do the concatenation check, how can we exclude this? Well, 192 doesn't end with 14, and so we can clearly see that 192 cannot be, the, cannot be produced by concatenating anything with 14. And so this step can also be skipped. Looking at 178, we can see that if we concatenate these because 8 ends with 1, sorry, because 178 ends with 8, this is a valid possibility. And so just like here where we did division for the multiplication case and subtraction for the addition case, we simply cut off the last bit of the string based on how long this string is. And then we try to obtain 17 from 17, which we know is valid. Essentially what we are doing is if the length of the target string, if the length of the target as a string is greater than the length of the last value as a string, this is necessary because we can't cut off the entire string. We still need to have something left to concatenate with. And the target as a string ends with the array last value as a string. And we can obtain the target value with the last few digits cut off, which we can get by first turning the target into a string and then slicing off some number of elements where that number of characters is equal to the length of the last value as a string. Then we can return true. This line got a bit messy, so let's clean it up a bit by extracting the target as a string and the last value as a string. There we go, that's a bit more readable. And these three lines give us would give us our solution for part two. I forgot to convert this back into an integer. And so this code now gives us our solution for part two. 
Now I'll briefly go over another way I did this, which was how I solved it when in the contest itself. This is just the first idea I came up with, or rather the first thing I got that worked, but it is much more inefficient. And so the example, I, the solution I've shown here is I believe the more the most efficient way to do this. This is just an alternative. We could instead check for all possible values that we can obtain from the array, and then just see if the number is one of these. The reason this is inefficient is because we don't preemptively cut out possible or rather impossible operations. For example, here we check that it's actually a multiple before attempting multiplication. We check that it's greater than before attempting addition, and we check that it actually ends with the value before trying concatenation. By skipping all of these, we will greatly slow down our program because we'll just get untrimmed exponential growth. But let's just do this anyway. It will be fast enough to still resolve in a reasonable amount of time. If the array only has one element left, then we can simply return that element. And we will return this as a set because that way we can avoid duplicate elements. Then we can just get the subset by looking for all possible values of everything except the last element. And then we can just return three sets joined together. The first set will be all of the possible outcomes if we use addition. So it's going to be x plus the last element for each x in the sub result. And then the second will be multiplication. And the final will be string concatenation. And then instead of checking whether we can obtain the value, we check whether the target is in the possible values formed from the array. And we can see that this is quite slow compared to our initial solution. But nonetheless, I thought it might be interesting to show. Note that for part one, this solution is actually a lot faster because first of all, our exponential growth is only double each time instead of triple each time. And second of all, string operations are just a bit slower. Python's pretty decent when it comes to integer arithmetic speed. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.